Hello and a very warm welcome to Sustainability Matters at UOR, the University of Reading's very own sustainability podcast. I'm Jackie Simpson from Sustainability Services and today we are talking about how to be sustainable and save money with an expert in the field, our very own Director of Energy and Sustainability, Dan Fernbank. Enjoy. Hi Dan, thanks for joining us today. To start us off, could you tell us a bit about what your role involves at the University of Reading? Quite sure, yeah. So I manage the sustainability team uh, and we're responsible for sustainability in the university's operations. So that means um, overseeing our energy and water efficiency work. It means measuring and reducing our carbon footprint, Um, looking after waste and recycling services, promoting sustainable travel initiatives, um, and importantly, also making sure that the university uh, complies with environmental regulations. Okay, that's great, thank you. What inspired you to go into this field of work? That's a, that's a very good question. Um, so I, um, I started studying part-time with the Open University uh, a number of years ago now. Um, I was interested in environmental issues and I wanted to understand more um, and I was interested in you know, potentially looking at a change of career. Um, and what I quickly realised is just how clear the science was around man-made climate change um, and that really climate change is undoubtedly the defining environmental challenge of our time and, and, and probably of all time. Um, And so, you know, from having a general feeling of wanting to do something um, more worthwhile and and good for the planet, I I think I became very clear that really I wanted to focus my um, career around helping to address the challenges of uh, climate change. Um, And and I was lucky enough to, um, uh, after a little bit of study with the Open University, to get myself a temporary um, job with a company that I ended up staying at for five years before I then joined the university in 2011 and have been here ever since. That's great, thank you. At the moment, it's on many people's minds, um, the cost of living and energy crisis. And although it's incredibly mild at the moment, we are approaching the winter months. Um, So could you give us your top tips about how to save money and be more sustainable um, in the home? Sure, yeah, I mean, it it certainly is, um, on everybody's minds, um, you know, it, it is a very hot, hot topic, so to speak. Um, and, and I think there are a number of things that can be done. And, and sometimes I think, um, you know, working in sustainability, you maybe forget the things that might be obvious to us because we do it day in, day out, um, but might not be so obvious to other people. So, um, yeah, lo- lots of thoughts. Um, but we're starting with the basics. Um, switching stuff off is, is the most obvious opportunity for saving energy. Um, you know, whenever you can, switch stuff off. Um, and, and that includes not leaving equipment on standby. So things like TVs, you know, they don't need to, to be left on standby. So don't leave them on standby. That, that's just money that you're throwing down the drain. Um, switching lights off, you know, um, whenever you leave a room, switch the lights off. Um, and, and then sort of basic things uh, that perhaps cost a little bit of money, but, but things like making sure that you have adequate insulation in your roof. Um, and if you're renting a property, you know, stick your head up in the loft and check for yourself um, and talk to your landlord if, if there isn't uh, sufficient insulation. There should be 27 centimetres of insulation in, in a well-insulated loft. Um, and if you are renting a property, then it's worth asking to see the energy performance certificate for the property. Uh, you should get that when you rent a property as a matter of course. but. Uh, uh, that gives an indication of how efficient the property is. Um, and then there's things, you know, that cost a bit more money again, like cavity wall insulation. That's a little bit more specialist. Um, other thoughts, um, sort of bulking up what you do. So things like, uh, you know, making sure that you only run your washing machine when you've got a full load. 
um, you know, sounds obvious, but but you know, not everybody does it, and, and it, it is an obvious opportunity to save energy. And, and uh, you know, normally thirty degrees is fine for uh, for washing your clothes. Um, dry your clothes naturally if you can. You know, um, using a tumble dryer is is um, an expensive thing to be doing. It's an expensive way to dry your clothes. So if you can uh, dry naturally, thinking about cooking together. You know, if you're in a shared household, think about cooking together. Um, and or cooking in bulk. So, you know, could, could you prepare two meals um, at, at the same time, for example? Um, and then I suppose you get on to, to, to maybe some of the more sort of technical opportunities, if, if you like. So um, a fairly low cost technical opportunity might be sort of thinking about um, if, if you're working from home or studying from home and you're the only person in the house, do, does, do you really need to have the heating on necessarily in the whole house if you can just be in one room? Um, and if you can get yourself into a small room um, and get a small electric heater, that may well prove quite a lot more cost effective than um, putting the entire central heating on. Um, and then I think I think uh, uh, th there is an opportunity around hot water. The way hot water is heated, I, I often see that people tend to have the hot water on far far longer than they really need to. Um, so really have a look at, at sort of how your hot water is set to be running, and if you haven't got a timer on it, make sure you get a timer on it. Um, and then there is advice out there as well, um, quite a lot at the moment about how to change the settings on, on the way that your boilers run. And, and, and that's that's probably um, one that's worth sort of looking up and understanding a li little bit further. It does make a difference whether or not you have a hot water tank in your home as to how effectively you can do that. Um, but if you if you um, have a condensing boiler um, that, that provides instant hot water, then you can actually turn the temperature down on your boiler and still provide sufficient heat for the hot water and sufficient heat um, for your um, your heating needs and get that boiler running more efficiently. What temperature would you recommend having your boiler at, or is that does that vary depending on the type? It it, it varies um, a little bit, it particularly varies depending on whether um, or how your hot water is provided. So you do need to be careful with um, hot water. Um, Legionella is is a risk from. Um, hot water systems and so uh, hot water needs to run to, to, to sort of be on the safe side of 65 degrees to make sure that any sort of bugs in the water system um, uh, get killed off. Um, if, if, if you haven't got the hot water um, tank, so if you're not storing hot water, then um, you know, th there are alternative options. But 65 degrees is a good is a good guide, and quite often they're set to run at 80 degrees, so there can be a good saving to be had there. Sometimes people say that it's cheaper to have the heating on all day rather than at a lower level, but all day rather than only when you're in the house. Do you have? Uh, is that correct or is that a myth? Um, if you live in a castle, then it's probably the right answer. Otherwise, I'd suggest no, it's not the right answer. It, you know, it does depend how long it takes your building and your building's fabric to heat up. So, you know, literally, if you did live in a castle, then it takes a very, very long time for, for um, you know, the space to warm up. But generally speaking, you're better to turn things off. And, and as a general guide, as I was saying at the beginning, switch stuff off if you can. Uh, the UK remains under drought conditions at the moment, which is probably going to be the case for, for quite a while yet, despite all the rain that we've been having. Have you got any other tips uh, around ways that people can save water um, and therefore save money? Yeah, um, I mean, a few thoughts. Um, having short showers, um, you know, is, is quite an obvious one. And, and, you know, the benefit of a short shower is not just that you save water, but you're saving energy as well. Because, you know, uh, you're using less hot water and, and therefore energy to heat that hot water. Um, if you can, you know, if you've got a garden, um, getting water butts is a very good idea. Um, you know, it's free water that you can use um, on your plants and actually it's better for your plants than, than um, you know, chlorinated water that you get from your taps. Um, and I suppose a little bit like energy, think about, you know, switching stuff off if you can. Um, so don't leave taps running when you're brushing your teeth. 
or, or you know rinsing stuff under net unnecessarily before you're washing it. Um, again, think about bulk washing. So you know again uh, again that sort of suggestion over saving energy by making sure your washing machine is always full. You know that's going to save you water as well. Um, something that always strikes me as a waste both of water and of energy is pressure washers. Uh, yeah, pressure washers. Um, you know, for cleaning a car or your patio, etc. They're incredibly energy intensive and quite water consumptive as well. So, um, yeah, think about avoiding those if you can. There's lots of other ways that people can be sustainable and save money. Um, and I'm thinking specifically around uh, things to do with waste and the way that we travel. Is there anything that you would suggest a, a kind of really great ideas that, that people can do um, to save money in those areas? Yeah, I think um, probably the big thing I'd say is buy less stuff. Um, you know, and I do mean stuff. Um, you know, th- th- don't just buy stuff for the sake of it. You know, really sort of question what you are buying um, and where you're buying it, um, you know, and whether you need to buy new. You know, can you buy second hand? You know, what, what, in terms of uh, sort of resources generally, um, the, the sort of the, the primary uh, materials used in um, making things is is quite sort of energy and, and resource hungry. So if you can um, buy second hand, great. If you can repair things, great. Um, and, and obviously, um, you know, if you can otherwise sort of find a reuse or, or recycle those materials, then so much the better. Um, I think food wise. Uh, lots of things you can do, you know, in terms of cutting food waste. So, so again, that sort of that batch cooking, you know, if you if you can um, batch cook a few meals at once, then, then they can help to sort of save waste. Um, freezing leftovers is an obvious thing, but also, you know, looking at actually what you can freeze. It is quite surprising what you can freeze, and particularly if if, if sort of. Um, you think you're not going to use, for example, a, a whole pack of herbs or a, a whole um, bottle of milk or something. I mean, you know, milk can be frozen um, and it's not necessarily an obvious um, thing to be done. But, but um, you know, that can be frozen. Herbs can be chopped up and frozen. Uh, vegetables, you know, rather than letting sort of vegetables go off, throwing them away. If you think you're not going to use them, dice them up and put them in, in your freezer. Um Making your own lunch is, is you know, an obvious sort of uh, cost-saving opportunity and, and inevitably will reduce waste as well because, um, you know, you buy lunch out and it's almost always going to be wrapped in, well, really in plastic, to be honest. Um, and, then, and then I suppose from a, you know, a, a travel point of view, if you can walk, if you can cycle, then, um, you know, by far the best way of um, saving energy and um, helping the environment both locally in terms of pollution and, and you know, uh, more widely in terms of uh, climate change. You shared some really great tips um, about how to save energy and money and be a lot more sustainable around the home. But obviously in a university setting, is there something, that, that the one kind of thing that you would love all staff and students at the University of Reading to do when they're on campus? Uh, yeah, the, I think there means, and I, th- and I, and I think um, you know, I've, I've said it already in a number of different places. But switch stuff off. I mean, you know, that really is the best opportunity for savings. Switch lights off. Switch computers off. Switch screens off. Switch other equipment off. Um, you know, so often I'll, I'll walk past a, a classroom or, or a meeting room and, and see the lights are on or. Um, the PC's been left on, and and often um, you know it's because no one person has that responsibility for switching things off. But if you're the last person out of the room, make sure you're the one that does switch it off. Or even if you're not the last person, you know perhaps hold back and be that person that switched stuff off. Um, and related to that, I guess you know shutting windows as well to make sure that we're not throwing heat out um, into the atmosphere unnecessarily. So I guess that's I guess that's two two asks in one. Thanks Dan and thanks very much for your time. That's been really helpful. Thank you, Jackie.